Good um, afternoon or early evening, everybody. My name is Louise Musgrave. I'm the Student Recruitment Manager for the online campus at the University of Law. And we're really pleased that you've come along today to Target Jobs uh, events that we're hosting um, online. And we're going to talk to you today about what it's like to study online. It's um, myself, uh, as I mentioned, Louise Musgrave, Bethany, who'll be joining us um, very shortly. But I've also got some colleagues and some student ambassadors in the room today. So I'd like to um, introduce them, bring them on camera. Uh, if we could start with uh, Dr. Richard Brandt, if, would you mind introducing yourself to everybody today? Thanks, Louise. Hi, everyone, and welcome. Um, so just to introduce myself, my name is Richard Brandt, and I'm a senior lecturer in the online campus. Um, I've been at the University of Law uh, around three years now, and I've been teaching across a, a range of modules and programmes. So I'll be talking to you shortly, just um, showing you what a module page looks like and talking to you more about um, uh, kind of learning and, and your studies in the online campus. So um, uh, yeah, I'm happy for other colleagues to introduce themselves at this point. Brilliant. Okay, so we hand over to um, Emma. Emma, would you like to introduce yourself to everybody today? Hi, everybody. Yes, uh, my name is Emma Hunter. I'm a student ambassador here at the University of Law and I'm studying the four year LLB uh, law course. I'm in my penultimate year. Fantastic. And Safia, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi everyone, I'm Safia. I'm studying the postgraduate law conversion course on the online campus. Thank you. And Gemma? Hi everyone and welcome. Um, my name is Gemma Dixon. I am the lead librarian for teaching. So it's my responsibility to make sure that the library is here to support you um, both online and in person um, by making sure that all of the content and resources you need are available to you. Fantastic. Casper? Sorry. <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name is Kasiva, and I am one of the disability advisors here at ULO. Um, so I do look after the um, the um, the online campus as well as um, uh, different campuses. Um, so I do support disabled students to set up the relevant adjustment in place. So, yeah, that's me in a nutshell. Thanks, Kasiva. That's that's great. And as I said, Bethany will be um, joining us shortly. So today's um, session is very interactive. We want you to ask us questions. You'll probably see a question box uh, to the right there. So please feel free to ask anything. There's no question uh, that uh, you know we, we won't try to answer. We will obviously try to answer as much as possible. And if we don't, we've also got some. Um, if we're not able to answer you here live today, then we will pop out details, our email details of where you can um, contact us. So uh, without uh, further ado, I'm going to go straight into what we are going to cover. So the webinar will last about an hour. As um, you've heard, you're going to hear from sort of various teams and our current students about what it's like to study online at the University of Law. We want to tell you a bit about uh, our university and what makes us so special. Then we're going to look more closely at the online campus and um, Richard Brandt, who's here today, our senior lecturer, is going to give us a demonstration of our online learning platform Elite. And I'm sure the uh, student ambassadors will be able to tell you a bit later on how easy it is to use um, our Elite system. Afterwards, we're going to look at the social opportunities. You know, how do you connect with each other at uh, the University of Law uh, through our online campus? Uh, we'll also have a, an area on disability and inclusion and wellbeing services. So Casper will go through that with you, Kasiba. Uh, and Gemma will give you a demonstration of um, our digital library. So we've got a fantastic uh, library service that you'll be able to access. And Gemma will kindly go through that with us. And then we'll finish with a Q&A session with our student ambassadors uh, who have introduced themselves today. But as I did say, they are available throughout uh, the session. So do pop questions in that Q&A box, whether that's uh, about student life or about the courses themselves, then please feel free uh, to ask those questions there. Um, so what about the University of Law? Why study at the University of Law? Well, we are a five-star university. We have an overall five-star rating from the QS World University rankings. And QS states a typical five-star institution is generally world-class in a broad range of areas. We enjoy an excellent reputation and we have cutting edge facilities and we're internationally renowned with our research and teaching facilities. 
as well as achieving an overall five-star rating as an institution, our online campus was awarded five stars for online learning. And our students are in employment for 15 months after graduating, 94% are in highly skilled occupations. And we link this to our expert careers service, which is one of the largest in the UK. And our careers service and employability team are really fantastic. They will look at your CVs. They will give you uh, appraisals. You'll be able to book one-to-one -one appointments. And we can talk a bit uh, about that later on with our student ambassadors. But more importantly, we've trained more practicing lawyers in the UK uh, than anyone else. And as a result, we have over 90,000 alumni from over 147 countries. That really is a, you know, a broad range. Uh, through our alumni, we are connected uh, to over 11,800 businesses and all organizations, which means as one of our alumni, you can obviously be one of those too. Our courses are taught by experts. We've obviously got Dr. Richard Brandt here today. Uh, many of our tutors have been qualified lawyers, professionals, or practice-focused academics. Finally, at ULaw Online, our dedicated tutors are either legal business, and we also have other courses as well, psychology and educational professionals. So with real life work experience and training in delivering a great student journey online, that's what we're about. We want to give you um, our expert knowledge and bring that to you through our online classroom, which we'll have uh, a chance to look, about, look at uh, a bit later. So we're now going to look about look at the sort of partners and the powerful connections um, that we work with. So for those of you interested in the solicitor route, these are national and international firms here. You can probably see some names that you have heard of, Clifford Chance, um, Ashurst. They all send their trainees to ULaw, along with many localised uh, firms. We have a vast network in the legal industry and deliver tr legal training to 94 of the top 100 law firms with exclusive relationships with 60 of the top UK law firms and many of the most um, prestigious firms uh, in the UK. As a result of these great connections, we again, through our employability and pro bono teams, we can offer you opportunities to get work experience at these firms and companies. We have lots of talks from the industry every week and at least one uh, law fair per year. So I want to tell you a bit more now about you know, how do we actually learn? Well, the great thing about uh, the way that we, we teach, we have a personalized support from uh, personal tutors. And again, um, these are known as academic coaches. Again, our ambassadors will tell you more about the connection uh, that you have with those. All materials and resources, both hard copy and soft copies, are ready, readily available. And we have subject support sessions. That's principally involving a sort of roller tutor interaction with students via the online trainee breakout rooms where students can post questions, receive answers from their tutors over the course of each unit, as well as studying together if they wish to do so. As well as a 30 minute live tutor drop in Q&A session, which could be scheduled at any time during the day and recorded for students who cannot attend. We have module guides and unit guides detailing the tasks to be undertaken, along with the outcomes for and context of the area to be studied. We have a ULaw um, revision app as well. Uh, that provides, that's for the SQE, that provides students with practice tests, re which replicate the SQE1 exams in order to revise and practice for the SQE1 assessments. So the revision app will also be useful in SQE2 to help students consolidate and revise the practice context within the SQE2 assessments um, where they're based. Students will also be supported through learner analytics, which will be present to students and their tutors through a dashboard. And we'll have a look at that uh, a bit later and how they are progressing through the course and allow staff to intervene uh, if necessary. So what about our uh, learning style then? We also, and we will be talking about this, uh, um, Dr. Richard Brandt will be talking about this a bit in a bit more detail, but uh, we, there are, pre-recorded lectures throughout the course. The same um, number is used for attendance variant. Other than the occasional live, which are recorded, obviously if students can't attend online, the, the units are asynchronous. And that means that students learn to a given deadline each week, working together or in allocated small groups. It's very flexible. So when you do or contribute to the work during the week, it is in your hands. All students have different demands on their time. And we'll talk about that 
uh, with our student ambassadors how they actually juggle everything. So anything presented live by a tutor when it occurs is always recorded for later access, if not immediately convenient to, to attend. Um, there are deadlines, uh, obviously, that you have to uh, adhere to for final production of work, whether that's individual or groups. So the timetable is to meet task deadlines rather than expectation that every student is available at the same time at once. So all assessments must take place on the dates that are stated. Um, our teaching follows a unique dynamic learning model, and Richard will tell you a bit about this in a moment. Prepare, engage and consolidate the PEC model using the university's virtual learning environment where the resources will be accessible. So the prepare stage is when students um, do their textbook, manual reading, multimedia, watching recorded lectures, completion um, of tasks and tests using knowledge quizzes, for example. Our engaged stage will be delivered by a com uh, combination of asynchronously and with live support sessions, the, we call them the LSSS. Students are supported in their studies by live support, subject support sessions of 30 minutes duration for each unit in the module. But these are not lectures nor workshops, but the opportunity to discuss tasks with and receive guidance from their tutor. So students are actually invited to raise questions in advance and these sessions are recorded. So attendance isn't compulsory. And the consolidation stage, the last stage is when students bring the first two stages to a close. So depending on the course, they are to do a mixture of short consolidation, learning activities, tests and assessments. So what's really important is to understand that time commitment, as it's the same online as it is if you're learning in person. It's not a shortcut route to the qualification. I think that's something we need to really get across today. We have cut out uh, travel and commuting, commun sorry, commuting costs and waiting outside the teaching room. So that's it. You still need um, to put that time in and dedicate the, the time to your studies. So what about um, the support offer, offered? Well, we've already mentioned the academic coaches and the live subject support sessions, to name but a few um, of the other support services we have. We offer financial support and advice. We have a student journey team who make sure you have the best student experience possible. We have a fantastic students union, uh, which we can talk about um, later. And of course, our disability inclusion and wellbeing support. And of course, most importantly, um, our IT support as well that are there to help you. So Bethany has um, joined us as well. I see she is in the chat box. That's fantastic. Welcome to Bethany. Um, I'm now going to hand over to Richard, who's going to tell you a little bit more about what our campus looks like and our elite online learning platform. So if I did, I'll hand over to you now, Richard. Thank you. Great, thank you, Louise. Hopefully, um, at this point, you can now see um, an example of a, of a module page. Um, so I'm going to spend the next few minutes just talking you through um, our approach to um, uh, learning in the online campus. So Louise has mentioned some really key points. Um, so I'll just re I'll, I'll reiterate a few of those and I'll also talk you through um, our learning approach um, in the online campus. And um, I'm going to use the, an example here from the landlord module just to talk you through uh, more about what Louise mentioned in relation to the prepare, engage and consolidate model. Um, so as Louise mentioned, um, our programs um, in the online campus at the University of Law are largely asynchronous. Um, and there's no requirement to attend live sessions, but crucially, um, engagement throughout the modules is really important. Um, and as Louis, Louise mentioned, your learning is, is therefore flexible. Um, and on your module page, we will post, uh, for example, um, recordings from uh, uh, lectures. And whilst learning is largely asynchronous, there are live sessions and live touch points with your uh, lecturers across your uh, module. So you're not left uh, on your own. You are supported um, throughout your studies. And there are also lots of opportunities for feedback on your uh, modules as well, whether that be, for example, um, feedback on um, a contribution you may have made to a discussion board, um, a piece of written work, um, it, or it may also be a mock assessment, for example. Um, and in relation to our learning model in particular, um, if I just show you the landlord module page at this 
point. Um, so if we scroll down, um, the modules are organized into units. So um, there's typically around 10 units uh, for each uh, module. So you can see here on the screen um, with Landlaw, there are um, here there are there are 10 units. And in relation to those, in relation to our uh, modules, the crucial thing here is that there is um, the learning model and the approach to learning is consistent across the programs and modules. So whilst they, there may be some uh, differences between programs and modules, the, lear the, the learning methodology and the approach to your studies is consistent. Um, and what that means is you can, ex you, you can expect um, a consistent kind of experience when you're working across different modules. And um, in relation to our particular approach to learning, um, if we take um, unit one, for example, here on Landlaw, so hopefully you can see that. Um, here in unit one, you're being introduced to uh, concepts in Landlaw. And in relation to how in particular you, you will approach your studies, you'll start off um, each unit across all the modules, as I mentioned, um, in the prepare section. And here, um, this goes beyond just signposting you to reading. So it will include activities as a part of that prepare um, section on the module. So you're not just given reading uh, to do and then left, uh, as I say, to your own devices. You are supported um, and you're signposted to activities in, in that prepare section. Um, and there are also key learning outcomes for each of the units. So again, you're um, sort of told what you need to be looking at and what you need to be working through. So uh, that helps to manage expectations when it comes to working your way through uh, reading. Um, and the prepare section can also include media. Um, so there's a variety of kind of methods in relation to conveying the information and material. And crucially, um, the prepare section can also include test your knowledge questions, which are really useful to check your understanding and to make sure that you're not just memorizing the law, but crucially, and this is something that we really focus on at the University of Law, is, is checking your understanding of the law and your application of the law, which is really important when it comes to um, going on to work in practice. And the prepare section also um, focuses on you know, guided independent learning. Um, and this takes place before what we call the engage section of a, of a particular unit. So in this section, you'll be carrying out prepare work in advance of, of the engage part of the module. Um, and then as you work your way through this particular unit for Landlaw, you, you can then see that you come to the um, engage section of the uh, module. Um, and here the focus is on um, utilizing the skills and knowledge that you've acquired in the prepare section. And then essentially you're putting that into practice. So that's, that's you're moving away here from memorizing the law to actually checking your knowledge and understanding and applying it to um, to the different kind of tasks in the engage section. So as I say, there's a real strong emphasis and focus on um, making sure that you understand the law, which is really important. So here, there's a chance to receive feedback um, in a number of units. Um, and here you can submit an exercise or activity. Um, and there's also the chance for individual tutor feedback as well. Um, so um, once you've had the chance to, to kind of check your knowledge and understanding and put that into practice, um, crucially, um, our learning methodology then moves into the consolidate section. And as I say, all units um, across all modules follow this learning uh, approach. And the consolidate section um, across the different units focuses on bringing together um, what you've learned so far, and it helps you to consolidate your knowledge understanding, um, which is really important when it comes to uh, revision. So it'll help you to check your understanding in relation to uh, things like principles, concepts, theories, um, and then it helps you to ensure that you can apply that crucially 
to um, you know either fictitious examples or real life examples um, and it gives you that crucial opportunity to check your knowledge and understanding so as you can see throughout this kind of learning approach um, you're not just signposted to reading and then left to your own devices and crucially um, here there's a real focus on um, ensuring that you um, actually understand the law that you're looking at and that you can apply that to um, kind of factual examples which is really crucial going into practice uh, as I say it's not just about memorizing the law it's also making sure that you can apply that, which is really important and something that we focus on um, and it's deeply embedded into this uh, learning methodology. So as I say, you'll, you'll repeat this approach across modules and that allows for consistency because um, you can then practice and develop your learning on modules as you get more familiar um, with this approach uh, throughout your uh, studies. Um, so I just wanted there to show you an example of a, of a module page and to talk you through our approach in a bit more detail in relation to kind of how you will um, study at, at the University of Law. Um, Louise, how am I doing for time? Is the, is the, is the time just to no, show? No, you're fine. You're, um, yeah, that's absolutely enough yeah. fine. So um, I'll just take a few minutes as well just to, we'll just move away from, from a module page here and I'll just show you um, elite in a little bit more detail um, and we'll be touching on parts of this throughout the session uh, but here um, elite is basically blackboard elite is basically our virtual learning environments this is where um, you will be you'll find your modules and this is where you'll also find further um, information and uh, links to um, resources and further support um, across uh, all of our um, business and support teams so um, on here, there's some really useful things that it's worth just highlighting. We have a, a really good app that you can use uh, while studying at ULaw. Um, and there's a link here to the My ULaw app. Um, and then there are also links to um, further information and resources on here, such as the library service. Um, you've also got links to um, loads of really useful and great resources around study skills. Um, there's information here crucially around things like assessments um, and um, there's also links to our other services such as um, uh, well-being for example um, and then in, in addition to our uh, all the support that our library uh, team and study skills team uh, provide we've also got um, you know key information and resources are here around um, things like employability careers and pro bono um, so there isn't time to go into all of these different sections in detail, but I just wanted to show you here um, the kind of range and the breadth of, of, of kind of support and links to further information and resources that we offer um, at the university. So um, thank you for listening and I, I'm happy to take any questions, but um, at this point, I'm happy just to hand over uh, back, back to you, Louise. Thank you. That was um, fantastic. It was really good to, for everyone to see you know, just how um, easily accessible um, Elite is. I mean, Emma, can you tell us a little bit about how you use Elite? I think it'd be nice to, to come on and give some real life examples. Yeah, sure. So I um, I work three days a week at a law firm and I've got two children. So for me, it's that um, it provides a real um, element of flexibility for me. So I can log on whenever I want, basically, and do my work. Um, and it's just so user friendly. So even if you're not tech savvy, um, it's it, you can pick it up really, really easily. Um, you can find your timetable, your access to your library services. It's everything is there. And it's so it's just so self-explanatory, really, when you go online. So, um, so yeah, so as soon as I've done on this call, I'm going to go on and do um, some, some of my work and I can basically switch from one thing to another, log off and then spend time with my children later. So it's, um, yeah, it's just really good. It's really accessible. I really enjoy it. Fantastic. And what about you, Safia? Um, yeah, I definitely just echo what Emma said. It's really good for having that flexibility and it's really easy to use. And also um, Richard talked about the PEC model. I found that I really enjoy using that model because sometimes you're a bit confused about a topic or you're not quite understanding it, but there's so many chances for you to reinforce what you're learning about. And by the consolidate, I've always found that I 
really understand what I'm learning about. So yeah, it's a great model, I think. That's great. Thank you. And thanks uh, to both of you for putting across your own sort of personal views of our elite system. So if anyone does have any questions about elite um, or anything that we brought up so far in today's um, session, then please um, feel free to pop your questions in the chat box. We've got uh, lots of us here today. Um, I, I don't know, Richard, if you're able to stay around, but um, if not, just like to thank you so much for, for your input um, so far. Um, so- yeah, no, very, very happy to, to stay in if anyone's got any questions specifically around um, uh, kind of what I've mentioned. Brilliant, um, yeah, okay. Take any questions. Fantastic. So um, we're going to move on uh, to the next section, uh, which is our social life uh, online. So I'm going to hand over um, to Bethany to introduce herself and talk a bit about um, the social side of being a, a student at the University of Law. Yeah, hi everyone. My name is Bethany. I'm a student recruitment officer at the online campus at the university. Um, so yeah, as Louise said, I'm just going to kind of very briefly talk about social life for online students. Um, so it's something that we take really seriously at the university. Um, we actually have a dedicated events officer, Jody, um, who spends a lot of a lot of time on creating events for our online campus students, essentially. Um, so we are really dedicated to building that kind of online community, a sense of belonging, um, despite the kind of remote learning. So that slide lists just some of the events available with the online campus. Um, so you can see there's kind of things more academic related, things like mooting, interviewing, presentation, competitions qualifying as a solicitor events but then there's also more creative things so you've got photo competitions you've got language learning opportunities um, they've done fitness challenges um, and that's just a kind of a, a small sample so um, Jodie's kind of constantly coming up with new ideas um, for social events for for online students um, and she is very open to suggestions from students as to what kind of events they want to see um, uh, available to them. Um, just to kind of give you an overview, um, we do have a students union as a whole university and that very much includes the online campus. So you've kind of got various clubs and societies both at the online campus but within the wider university that you can get involved in. Um, we've got a virtual student common room as well, which is really exciting. Um, and I mentioned some of those kind of virtual events that Jodie helps to organise. She also does um, organise in-person meetups where there's the demand for it as well. So that is always um, a possibility kind of meeting up with people um, in, in the same part of the country as you. Um, but really, I wanted to get our student ambassadors to talk more on this because they're, they're the ones who are kind of actually um, experiencing online study themselves. Um, so maybe if, Emma, we start with you, if you just wanted to kind of say anything about um, kind of social life for online students or what kind of opportunities you've either been involved in or, or have seen as available to you as an online student. Yeah, sure. Um, so like like you've pointed out, there's so many activities that it's available to you to, you know, you're not excluded just because you're studying online. So constantly I'm getting um, emails about different um, uh, different events that can, can take place. And it's really down to you whether you actually take part. You're not forced into it. You're not pressurised into doing any of it. So, again, it gives you that flexibility as to whether you participate or not. Um, what I did do when I first started my course was I made connections with other students so I took it upon myself to um, set up groups. So we use I use WhatsApp an awful lot with my fellow students on different courses um, and I make my connections that way as well. And in that way, you can actually um, you feel that you, you know, you are part of a, a class. Um, so when you're struggling with things or when you don't understand certain concepts and you can talk to each other, you can arrange meetups. Many of us in my cohort have met up and we've made some really good friends. So it's not just restricted to the events that you law provide to you you can actually make them connections yourself so i've, I've just yeah the, the making those making the friends that i've got all over the world really it's just been brilliant and it just makes you feel part of some kind of really good community yeah no that's great to hear yeah and and safia anything to add about your experience of social life online 
Yeah, so when I joined, um, I think it was nice to see how just because you're an online student, you can still get involved in clubs and societies, because I think everyone knows that's a big part of your university experience. Um, so there's some like academic ones. I think there was a legal and technology society. And then there's also some that are purely just for fun. So there's like a board game society. Um, so you can connect with people who have similar interests to you and just do things for fun, which is nice. Um, and then Bethany, as you mentioned, we get a lot of emails from the online campus team about different events that they're running. So just a few that I can remember off the top of my head are like, I think there was a festive quiz that we had an email about, um, a pumpkin carving competition. And there's also a book club, I think, for online students and staff members to get involved with. So again, there's just lots of different things. Um, and, you know, there's for all the different interests that people have, there'll be something that you can get involved in. And again, like Emma mentioned, the WhatsApp group for me has been really useful. And that's one of the main ways that I use to stay in contact with students and just get to know other people on my course. Um, so, for example, if I'm doing a task and there's just something that I'm a bit confused about, I'll just pop it in the chat and there'll always be people who are online and just happy to help um, explain something to me. And just today, I think there was someone who couldn't make one of our sessions because they had an appointment and immediately there was a few people who were happy to say that oh I'll share my notes with you so just because you're an online student you still do make good friends who um, are willing to help you which is nice yeah that's lovely to hear brilliant um so yeah that's just a kind of whistle stop tour of um social life online obviously if you do join us it's something that you learn a lot more about in your induction um and you'll get kind of regular emails about all these social opportunities available but we just wanted to mention um and can, to reassure you that there is a real sense of community and belonging despite kind of everyone being based in different parts of the country or the world in a lot of cases as well so that's all from me i think we're moving on now to um disability and inclusion uh, and well-being from Kasiba if uh, if you're there Kasiba yeah hi everyone uh, hi thanks a lot Bethany um, hi everyone my name is Kasiba and I am the disability and inclusion advisor for the online campus um, as well as the um, the um, other campuses um, so today I'm going to unpack um, the support that available for online students um, whether online or uh, on campus so um, next slide please Um, so you do have a lot of services that you can access the disability and inclusion plan, my department um, and the study skills, accommodation service, money and housing uh, advice, well-being advice and 24 seven counseling and mental health support um, as well as uh, uh, as well as the ULO well-being app and the student, um, of student support funding um, black bullying the financial support that you can access just bear in mind all the services are free and confidential so uh, all the uh, all the information all the um, information all the details that you um, are sh you share with the um, the advisors um, it won't be um, shared with other departments um, uh, unless we uh, we have written consent from yourself. Um, also, you can make you can book an appointment either via Teams, Microsoft Teams, or Zoom, or um, via Collaborate. Um, also, you can request a telephone appointment. Um, so I'll um, I'll expand a little bit more in terms of the um, the different various channels that you can um, request. So you can speak with the certain advisors. Also, you can find out a lot of information about these services and the support which are available for you um, on Elite. So please do visit the um, the Elite page for different services um, at the University of Law. Um, next slide, please. <clears throat> So well-being support uh, advisors. So each um, each students will be assigned to their allocated advisor. It depends on their campus. Um, so um, you will be signposted to, um, as I said, to your allocated advisor, and you will have a lot of information and various um, advice and practical support um, to um, to overcome your difficulties, where that includes the mental health, anxiety, and academic well-being support. Um, the um, well-being service, they do provide triage appointment 
and uh, drop-in sessions. Um, um, also, they can they can send post send post to you to specialist services, and um, whether externally or internally. Um, also, they will be in a team. They do work closely with the um, academic team as well as the um, other department, um, including the disability and support team. They do uh, offer, as I said, um, drop-in sessions or drop-in appointment. So you can book the appointment uh, via the uh, relevant channels, uh, Microsoft Teams or in person. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so we do have the well-being support, the counseling and mental health um, support or service. Um, so you can access the support. Um, it is available on the app or uh, you can um, signpost yourself um, using the website. Um, so I do encourage the students always to um, use this particular service. Um, as I said, it's completely free. So it is available 24-7. Um, 365 days a year so um, please uh, do um, access this type of service um, next slide please um, what, so yeah as I said I am one of the disability advisors so um, each student will be assigned um, allocated advisor so I'm responsible of the online um, for the apprenticeship courses and um, the undergraduate um, as well as the um, other um, in person or um, on, um, um, on um, sorry, the on um, or the face-to-face -face courses. Um, so um, similar to the um, the well-being service, so um, the disability and support team they will provide you with the appropriate uh, information. So uh, normally, what I encourage my students to share their uh, or disclose their medical condition, um, so we can set up the relevant adjustment in place for them. Um, also, we do encourage the students to book an appointment. So we do have weekly appointments um, on Wednesday and Tuesday. So um, it's a 10 minutes appointment. Um, uh, however, um, once you are being assigned to your allocated advisor, so it varies from 20 minutes appointments to 15 to half an hour appointments. So you can share the uh, your um, or address your concerns with your allocated advisor. Um, first thing first, there are diff three different stages. Um, when you are registering with the inclusion and disability uh, team, uh, first stage is disclosing your um, your medical record or medical um, evidence um, or, or medical condition. Um, secondly, once the uh, medical uh, evidence um, are received, um, the allocated advisor they will get in touch with you. Um, either they will set up the um, the adjustment in place, or they will invite you to um, a phone appointment or a Teams meeting to establish uh, further. Uh, information or um, further support which could access whether externally or internally. We do advise on the DSA, the Disabled Support Allowance, um, to, so you can apply um, uh, as soon as possible, whether before you start your course or during your course. Um, also, we do have a check-in service, um, so we can um, advise the students um, to, uh, to or send the application on their behalf to the Student Finance England, um, the DSA. To, uh, this uh, type of service uh, it helps the students to avoid any errors or um, any mistakes in terms of once they submit in their application um, uh, or contacting the student finance. Uh, we do advocate. We do uh, act as an advocate. Um, so we do contact the other departments on the students' behalf when the consent to the share to, uh, once it, it is obtained. So we do encourage you to always. Um, engage with our service. Um, so um, sometimes the uh, within the student community, we do have the perception that the disability and inclusion um, service it is only for disabled students uh, primarily, but it, it is um, for all of the students. So if you uh, if you are feeling um, that you do have you require the appropriate support or the relevant support, we do uh, encourage our students to contact us. So we can uh, we can basically um, help you to overcome your difficulties or signpost you to the relevant team, whether externally or other uh, stakeholders. What we we normally liaise with. Um, next slide, please. 
Yeah, uh, so uh, as I said before, so we do encourage you to use the Wellbeing app. Um, it, some of the feedback that I've got from the students, um, the Wellbeing app it is really useful so to maintain your uh, Wellbeing. Um, so yeah, I do encourage you to access um, as much as service or um, apps which are available uh, for you. So it's completely free, so why not? So yeah, um, I think that's it from me. Um, Next slide, please. Thanks, Kasiba. Yeah. That, okay. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> that was great. Um, you know, very informative. And um, I don't know if Emma or Safi have any feedback on, on well-being, whether it's whether you've actually used the app um, before, how easy it is to to access. Um, does anyone have any uh, for my ambassadors have any comments on that? Emma, yeah. starting with you, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, um, so yeah, I've used it and I've got it and it's it is really, really helpful um, because um, study, studying law, studying a degree is really difficult sometimes and you just sometimes need that little bit of support. So being able to access little tips and tricks and just um, um, access to um, the support that you get from, from the one-to-one -one appointments, for example, is just, it's just really, really helpful and it just helps to reset you, reset how you approach things. So yeah, I think it's it's absolutely important, especially when you work virtually and you may feel that you have less connection at times. Um, it's having that extra support there is is absolutely valuable. So um, yeah, it's really helpful. Fantastic. And what about you, Safia? Have you got access to the app? Um, yeah, so I haven't used much of the services yet, but it's just nice to know that you have that support available. Um, if you do need it, if you get a bit overwhelmed with stuff, it's nice to just know that it's, there's lots for you to um, check and there's lots for to help you. Brilliant, thank you. Okay, so um, now we're going to hand over to thanks, thanks to Kasiba. We're going to hand over now to um, Gemma Dixon, who is our um, digital learning development librarian. So she's going to tell you about all the wonderful things um, that you can do through the library. So over to you, Gemma. Thank you um, and hello to everyone again. So yes, as the slide says, um, we, the library and the study skills service are a merged team, which means that if you need any support around what you're reading, how you're reading it, how you're taking notes on it, um, you can come to one place and find that information. What I'm going to do is share my screen and just very quickly talk you through um, what it might look like when you come to access the library services. I'm going to start with um, kind of a follow on from what Richard was saying. Um, so when he showed you a module page, you might have noticed there was um, a reading list link there. And this is what a reading list link um, looks like if you click on it. I've chosen a different module, but you'll see it's separated in exactly the same way, broken down by unit. So if I just go into one of these units, all of the reading will be available for you online if you're asked to be asked to read anything. So if I click on this book, you will see it takes me directly into that book. And then if I click read online, you will see I'm, I'm straight into it. Most of you, if you have um, studied before or recently, probably have used ebooks before. But if not, um, I will just sort of give you a quick flick through some of the pages so you get the, get the idea. Um, it's really easy. The functionality of ebooks is really simple. So if I just close this tab on the side, you see you can put it across two pages. So it feels like um, a paper book. You can highlight things you across the top here you can zoom in if you need to there are is lots of accessibility in ebooks as well so um if you want to do things like change the background color you can do all of that across here in the settings you can make things bold you can change um, functions you can um, quite often get the text read aloud to you if that's something that would potentially suit you better so that is how you would potentially do most of your reading so you start from a link to a, a reading list it's very clear what you're expected to read you have a direct link to it it opens it up, 
you can see what you've looked for before so you don't forget things so you see i have some things down the side here that i have saved books so um this is your own account within um the the book platform so any notes you make within this book which you can very easily do you can highlight and add things down the side on on this side um, are saved and they will be there for the next time you decide to access the book so you can very much dip in and out of it so if something comes up and you need to close it down it will all automatically be saved in your own account so that's kind of what reading the books will look like i'll just give you a very quick um guide to what the library website looks like just so you've got um an idea of our services beyond buying the books and providing databases for you so if i scroll down you'll see it's really easy to navigate from the front page i'm not going to go through every one of these tabs but um referencing often comes up as a question so that is there at the bottom you can click straight into it um, it's really easy to access support um, how you get into the study skills service how you get into a specific collection so if i click on that one you will see it is just broken down by the subject matter and i will just highlight here the leisure reading collection is really um a really nice extra that you get as part of the library so it's ebooks and audio books um, that are separated into sort of genuine leisure reading uh, books for fun and also all these community collections so if potentially um, you're interested in things like disability and neurodiversity or if you're an international student um, we have reading on all of those items as well um, provided to everyone as part of your um, student journey i'll go back a couple of pages um, and we'll be looking at the skills academy in a second but we also have our workshops calendar here and i'm just going to click on it to get give you an idea of the number of workshops that we run so this page shows the month of march and the days across the top and you can see we have multiple sessions running um, live every day these are provided by study skills experts and um, librarians to help you with lots of things in relation to your study so if i just highlight a few of them we have various referencing sessions at the moment we have practicing legal writing courses which is um, going to be very helpful for a lot of people study skills about essay writing more generally how to structure an essay um, here we have finding statistics um, and using statistics and then lots and lots also on um, legal research as well so those are available to all students you, you, you don't have to attend but if you think you would like to engage with this you just um, would sign up to the course and come along on the day um, they usually presentation format but there's plenty of time to ask questions as well down the side here we also have um, our one-to-one -one appointments so if you did want to book a virtual appointment um, on any of these topics here you could do that via this site um, and the same works for study skills as well so um, this is the library side of things but study skills equally if you wanted ad advice about writing skills or uh, note-taking skills uh, time management skills they're all available as a one-to-one -one appointment they generally last about half an hour and you can pick a, a subject specific librarian or you can book anyone um, so you could book me as um, the LPC SQE librarian or me as the online librarian or Alternatively, you could go for any one of my colleagues who would be equally able to support you. Um, there's lots of other support you can get. The other main one, which I will show you, is via the Skills Academy. So the workshops and the one-to-one -one appointments are obviously live sessions. So the Skills Academy is our asynchronous pre-recorded sessions, which cover much of the same thing. The Skills Academy is accessed either via the library website or via Elite. This is what the catalogue looks like, just to give you an idea of the range of um, things we have on here at the moment. Um, so we have things about creating presentations with Sway, effective academic writing, you'll see that comes up a lot. Um, using Google in your studies, 
how to survive formal dinners is is a great one and all of these are really um short to the point they have um, a little quiz at the end where you can get a certificate to download it explains a, so a lot of these like how to use law trove how to use hein online are there the these are resources that you will use as part of your course and we've prepared these short videos and questions for you so that you can get the most out of them from the very start of your studies i'll just carry on scrolling down so you, so you get the general idea and um, the great thing about skills academy is it is available to you because it's all pre-recorded it's available to you anytime you would like it it follows the PEC model so um, not in quite the same way but you will be expected to do some prepare tasks there's a bit of engagement and the consolidation is the quiz at the end to get your certificate um, you can come back to this as many times as you want you don't have to do it all um, so I think this bit of practical law um, course probably is about half an hour long in total but no individual video is more than five minutes they're all really clearly labeled about um, the subject matter so you can just watch five minutes if that's all you need you dip out of it it'll remember you've done that bit and if you want to come back to it later within it within your course you can do and your dashboard just here will then show you a summary of the courses you have done before um, I'm not sure why mine is not coming up today um, but it it should have my certificates here as well um, that's here we go so this is a certificate I've achieved I can just download it if I want to if I want to prove it for my CV uh, or I want to show my lecturer if they've said go away and look at the resources on this particular subject matter I can download the certificate and say I've engaged with that and, and completed that course um, I think that was pretty much everything I wanted to cover um, I'll stop sharing and I'll just um, see see what questions there might be um, or open up questions for anyone else thanks so much um, Gemma that was very informative and it's good to really go through those sort of study skills and support that, that we obviously offer. If anyone does have any questions, um, we've got a, just over sort of five minutes left of today's event. So please do pop them into the chat box. Uh, if, if you may want to have something about the courses or perhaps something we've talked about today with our elite system, study skills, or perhaps the disability and inclusion service. Uh, we'd be more than happy to answer any questions that you have. So just pop them into that chat box. Um, but in the meantime, uh, we'd like to put some questions to our student ambassadors uh, today because it's, it's great we've got them uh, on board and, and we want to start with Emma if that's possible and, and just to ask you um, Emma why did you choose the University of Law and why the online campus? Okay so when I was looking to study law and um, the two things that were really important to me was the work-life balance and the quality of education uh, I work for a large law firm and so I approached our careers department and I approached the partners that I work for and they first and foremost recommended the University of Law, um, just simply because the quality of the education was uh, was definitely um, something that they considered was um, was there. Um, but also, I you know I work three days a week and I have two children as well, so I do want to have a social life and I do want to be able to maintain all the activities that I still like to do. I love to do running and enjoy my life really. So being able to cut out the travelling time. Um, of going to university and being able to do this course around my other responsibilities was really important and it gives me that um so again that's that that was that those two things were the things that mattered most to me anyway that's great thank you and thanks for sharing that um that story with us so safia what about you uh, if we were to ask you you know why why did you choose to study online um yeah so i think i would definitely agree with emma it's just for me, the online campus was the right choice just because of the flexibility that it offered. Um, I didn't live that close to any of the campuses. So just cutting out the commuting time and just being able to start my studies just by opening my laptop in my own bedroom just seemed like a no brainer for me. Um, it's really nice to sort of just 
um, I don't know how to phrase it, I guess to just sort of have, like I said, just the flexibility really, um, just being able to do my studies when they work for me and I can do it around my part-time job that I've got rather than having fixed two-hour workshops like some of the on-campus students do, um, just being able to catch up with recordings that I've missed if I've been working or things like that. So, yeah. Okay, that's great. Um, I'm going to put a question now to um, Richard, uh, if possible, just to ask you, how would you, uh, what advice would you give to students to prepare themselves for their online course? If they're thinking about applying, what, what, what would be sort of your top tips? Well, I think really um, in, in terms of just preparing yourself for um, kind of studying online is, is just to be kind of open minded, really. And a lot of um, uh, a lot of things you'll be learning on your um, modules are skills that you'll continue you, that you'll continue to develop as you're going through. So I think it's really important just to um, not come in with any kind of prefixed notions about how you might kind of approach your studies and learning and just to remain open to that as you're going through um, your programs. Um, and there's a, as, as a, as a whole wealth of support available to you, um, as colleagues have indicated in the session in relation to things like the library and reading and note taking to study skills, uh, et cetera. Um, and they're all skills that you'll continue to develop all the way through your studies and even into your career. Um, so my kind of top tip there would be not to kind of come in with any kind of prefix notions about how you've learnt in the past and just to kind of remain open to developing your skills um, in the online campus um, in relation to how you're approaching your um, different modules. So, you know, reading and note taking is a perfect example. Um, it's something we all do, but it's, it's a skill that you can develop as you're going through um, your kind of modules as you approach different areas of, of law. So that'd be the main kind of um, tip I'd, I'd provide. Okay, thanks, Richard. Thanks for that insightful um, answer. And I'm now going to go to Gemma, because I know it's a question that does come up a lot in the chat box. Um, just talk about um, access to the library. If you can't get um, what well, other, other alternatives, I suppose, if you could just talk through uh, it, going on to campus for students, if, if that's a possibility. Yes, absolutely. So um, obviously, you won't ever be assigned anything to read that isn't available um, electronically via via the library but if you do want to go into campus a lot of students um, even those who study online just appreciate the fact that there's a quiet dedicated space and go want to go into study um, and that is completely possible for for you whether you're studying online or not so you can go on to any one of our campuses um, Obviously, it might, might, will depend how close you live to one of them, but um, you just have to make sure you bring the appropriate ID the first time you go, um, check the opening hours, that type of thing. Um, but yes, you're available to your all our libraries are available to all students um, and all of our services within those libraries. So like face to face appointments, if you were wanting a face to face appointment, you would be able to get one. Um, with the library service, study skill services is um, all home workers. So those are virtual only. Um, you are able to borrow paperback books, take them home. So there's plenty of opportunity to get involved on our physical campuses um, in relation to the libraries if you want to. Fantastic. Um, is there anything else you'd like to ask Bethany before we uh... Close up because I can't, I can't see any more questions in the chat box. So we do have a few more moments. Um, so do feel free uh, another minute or so uh, to pop your question in the chat box. But Bethany, was there something else that you'd like to ask the panel today? Um, I was just um, curious to know what our ambassadors' plans are for when they graduate. So um, maybe Emma, if you want to go first. Yeah, sure. Big question. Um, Apologies. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, yeah. Um, so um, I'm hoping to get a training contract um, with the firm that I work for, Cross Fingers. Um, so, um, so I hopefully know that by the end of the summer. And then when I graduate next year, then hopefully I'll start the um, studies for the SQE one and two. And then hopefully after that, go into my training contract and then qualify as solicitor. That's the plan. 
Brilliant. And Safia? Yeah, similar for me. Um, so hopefully next year I'll do the SQE again at ULaw. And then after that, I'll begin my training contract. Brilliant. Oh, well, yeah, good luck to both of you. Um, I have just popped into the Q&A. Um, our online courses, so that's all of the undergraduate and postgraduate courses we offer at the online campus, um, as well as our upcoming events, because we run um, many uh, events about various courses, but also similar to this, what it's like to study online, um, general Q&A drop-in as well, if you have any questions that don't quite fit in with any of those specific events, um, and also an email address, so postgradevents at law.ac.uk. If you uh, realise afterwards that there's a question you wished you'd asked, um, please do pop it to us uh, at that address and we'd be happy to answer there. Thanks so much, Bethany. So uh, I think we've come to time now. Um, Bethany, as, as mentioned, there is a, an email address. If you have questions, maybe after uh, this event, then do pop your question to us at postgrad events um, at lord.ac.uk, the, the address in that chat box. So to thank everybody for coming along today, um, to our student ambassadors, to Gemma and Richard, to Kasiba, and to um, all the people viewing today, good luck for the future. And thanks to Target Jobs for allowing us to uh, run this event today on this platform. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Take care, care, everyone. Bye.